Ladies and gentlemen, we have a 2023 Nissan Z today in this gorgeous yellow. And I gotta say, this car is quite a looker. The best Japanese looking car you can buy new right now, I am convinced. A lot of inspiration from prior Z generations. Very 300ZX taillights right here, I love that. The silhouette is just so, oh, just so timeless, so classic. This is a vehicle that you, you know is gonna age very well. They did the whole retro modern styling just right. I think they really knocked it out of the park. The front end has been polarizing. A lot of people don't quite like the grill. I think it's fine. It's pointing back to the 240 and the 240 had the, um, the bumper that kind of splits that front grill. But I think this looks fine personally. I think it's very sharp looking. Love the headlights. Amazing looking vehicle. Now. As spec, this is $53,000. You kind of have to get the performance pack because without the performance pack, you're going to have smaller brakes and no LSD. So if you want to do some serious driving, canyon carving, track stuff, etc., then you need to have the performance pack. And now you're running 53K, pretty close to the Supra in price. But the question today is, how does she drive? And should you consider the Z over the Supra? We're joined by the one and only Fenton Sun. The Nissan Zygreen right here. Nissan Zygreen, there you go. Link to his channel down in the description. Now, first impressions of this interior. I actually like it a lot. I think Nissan did a great job modernizing this interior. You can still see a lot of the ovals. You know, the, the 350 and the 370, they had a lot of ovals in their design. You can see it here, you can see it here and there. But for the most part, it's been totally revamped, totally modernized, and I like it a lot. You have a completely digital dash, and this gauge cluster has a nice contrast, nice resolution, looks good. A little bit of piano black in areas that I'm not a fan of, but I'm also not the biggest fan of piano black. Interior is a very nice place to be, very driver-centric. We have the three gauges of boost, turbo speed, and voltage all pointing towards the driver. It's not the most roomy cabin, but very similar to the Supra. Check this out. Classy. I like that. Z for Zygreen. Z for Zygreen. Got this little fake carbon fiber pattern to it. Very nice, very nice. And we're off. Let's see how she drives. Now you gotta keep in mind, this car is based on the same platform as the 370, and the 370 is based on the same platform as the 350. So when you're looking at this versus the Supra, with the Supra you're getting a Japanese-German platform that is much more modern. In this instance, sure, you are getting pure Japanese platform, but it's also two decades old. And of course they've modernized various things of the car, but the actual bones, it's still very much based on the prior gen vehicles. We're powered by a three liter turbocharged V6, putting out 400 horsepower, 350 pound-feet of torque. I like those power figures. In terms of weight, we're around 3,500 pounds, roughly 100 pounds heavier than the Supra. Now the Supra is rated at 382 horsepower, and keep in mind that all those German turbo engines especially from BMW, are underrated. So in terms of the actual get up and go, I've been finding, in fact, we can actually do one, do a little pull in a second here. I've been finding the Supra feels a little bit faster to me than the Z. Although the Z does feel very adequate with its power delivery. You don't feel like it's, it's, uh, it's underpowered by any means. Rear visibility is quite limited. I'm having to duck my head to see in the rear. Yeah, struggling for traction in, in first. Definitely a traction limited vehicle, but doesn't quite pull as hard as the Supra in my opinion. What do you think, Fenton? I mean, it's still a damn fast car. It's a much, much more accelerative driving experience than a 370. I'll say yeah. that. Because the twin turbos really do give you a huge amount of torque in that mid-range. Like, right around three to 4,000 RPM. This pulls in a way that the old naturally aspirated V6s never could. 
what's interesting to me is that they also sound very similar. You can tell this is a Nissan Z car, right? Even though it is a different engine than the prior gen, it has a very similar note to it. Kind of a truck-like sound almost. I actually kind of like it. I mean, I, I enjoy... Yeah, this thing hauls. It hauls ass. <laughs> now the transmission, I don't find myself enjoying as much as other manual vehicles. It, it definitely feels industrial, a little truck-like. I find that the cross shifting, so going from fifth to fourth or third to second, you have to be pretty intentional. You can't just quickly do these shifts because there's a risk of misshifting otherwise. So very, very mechanical, a lot of resistance to it. It's not, a, it's not a sloppy, loose shifter, but it's not as pleasant to use as the Supra. Supra is very slick, it's still notchy and mechanical, but in a little bit more of a natural way that encourages you to drive it hard and fast. I this, think one thing you notice with this one is that you hear the shifts. It's like clunk, clunk, clunk. Yeah, you can, you can feel and hear the clunk very prominently as you enter the gate. response is fine though rev matching no issues the brakes feel all right i feel like they're not quite as um i wish it's a little bit more bite <laughs> they can be playful they can definitely be playful Yeah, in terms of the brakes, they feel all right. Nothing really to write home about. I wish I had a little bit more initial bite. But very easy to modulate. Keep in mind that with regards to suspension geometry, this has double wishbone in the front, which theoretically would make it a superior option to the Supra, should theoretically have a better front end, but Driving this, I mean, a lot of it comes down to chassis tuning as well. And the initial impression is that this is maybe a little bit softer than the Supra. Would you agree? I think this needs a good coilover kit. It, the way it's set up from the factory feels more GT in terms of the suspension tuning. Yeah, so the, the actual front end, when I'm giving it these inputs, it doesn't feel quite as sharp as the Supra, not quite as immediate. Not that it's problematic, but the Z has always been kind of the Japanese muscle car, the 350, the 370, and this, I think, continues that lineage, where it's more of a, you're not going for the razor edge track weapon, you're going more for a powerful, comfortable GT that happens to be Japanese, the Japanese muscle car. Yeah, I do think this car takes a different approach than the BMW Zubra, even though on paper they're very similar, similar weight, similar power, twin turbo, you know, six cylinder, or at least turbocharged six cylinder, manual, uh, rear LSD. But the way they approach the hardware of what they have and using it in a way to make the car feel unique, very different between the two. This is absolutely, like you said, a Japanese muscle car. The Supra feels like a German sports car that has a Japanese exterior. Well said, well said. Other ways to compare these two vehicles, in the actual interior space, they're both nice places to be. The Supra definitely has more compromised visibility. And I've had a lot of issues getting in and out of the Supra. I'm six foot one, and the, the low roof line here really has caused issues, especially when on track with the helmet. I've gotten cramps in my, in my abdominal area from just trying to squeeze in. Not a fun experience. Don't have the same issue in this car, but overall visibility, a little bit improved, but it's still, you know, it's a tight, small sports car. In terms of interior quality, I'd say that the Supra, a little bit higher, I give it the edge, but this is still a very pleasant cabin. Definitely feels a lot more roomy here versus the Supra. The Supra, you have that very long dash. And it makes you feel like you're sitting really far from the front of the car. This one, it makes you feel like you're sitting more, I guess, closer to the middle. There we go, this is a good road. This is a good road. Oh, slipping on my brake pedal a little bit. These heel toes. 
toes. I can actually see this vehicle being a great fit for a lot of people. People that want something that's cool and sporty and fun and comfortable to drive, and they don't care about going to the track. Most people don't go to the track. You know, this. I think this vehicle is actually very fitting for a large population of car enthusiasts. I agree. I Maybe not has... the driving enthusiasts and the track rat yes. and the people that are really all about driving dynamics like we are, but for a large portion of car enthusiasts, I think it's a very fitting vehicle. I completely agree. It's less of a driving dynamics focused car than the Supra. The Supra really, in a lot of ways, does come alive when you push it hard. This car, it does seem to be more... Seven tenths of a vehicle. Seven, yeah, not, seven not a ten tenths. Super, you can push a lot harder. This one, when you push it harder and harder, I haven't pushed it on the track, but from what I've seen, it tends to have some issues. It tends to it tends to fall apart when you get to that limit. It's softly sprung, the front end, despite being double wishbone. I, again, I think the suspension, if you address that in the aftermarket, that could really wake this car up in terms of handling. But as it... As it's tuned from the factory, I think this is more comfortable than the Supra. By a little bit, not by a huge margin, but the softer suspension, the, the airier cockpit, the, the ease of ingress and, and egress just makes it an easier car to live with. And in terms of power delivery, the two are so... I mean, the B58 is definitely the better engine, but when you put your foot down, you're going to feel a very adequate amount of power in both. And I think people that are going like, oh, it's it's 0.2 seconds here and this much horsepower there. I don't think that when you're behind the wheel, you're really gonna feel much of a difference. Yeah, you're not you're gonna- splitting hairs. Yeah, it's, it's really not. It shouldn't be, the spec sheet should not make you decide one vehicle versus the other. Yeah. The acceleration of this car is more than adequate. I do not think it needs a single additional horsepower. Yeah, plenty of torque as well. It's not the, the torque monster that the B58 is, where you can, it'll just pull from anywhere in the rev range. But this is still a, a fun a fun engine to ring out. And that, my friends, is the new 2023 Nissan Z. By the way, if you haven't already, try watching these videos with headphones because the binaural audio, especially with the passenger, is gonna feel very immersive, very enjoyable. My friends, thank you all so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check out the Zygreen channel if you haven't already. Much love, my friends, and I'll see you guys in the next one.